Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sam Off, Synchrobol Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present a very inadvisable idea and in this case this particular version would not actually work, uh, but we will make changes. This is the Siamese shuttle idea, basically launching the shuttle as if it was the Shinkansen space plane, but of course it's not built for that, uh, so it cannot carry enough fuel inside of it to do that job. And, of course, if it's going to use the RS-25s, the hydrogen-oxygen engines that the shuttle normally has, that means that the fuel is very much not dense and therefore takes up a lot of space. So we wouldn't be able to really build the body. I mean, there, there are designs that involve having a shuttle-like thing with hydrogen and oxygen in it, but it's really hard. Uh, and you really need to make the tanks very light and the body very light. But the shuttle is not made like that. So we have to have the tanks on the outside here, and uh, I'm using the magic tank type because even the magic tank type doesn't have a dry mass comparable to the external tank of the space shuttle system. So I tried my best, but there, there we are. But uh, it's about 5% dry mass for these tanks, and it is hydrogen and oxygen all the way. Uh, no special balancing putting the oxygen up. Uh, the tanks on either side are identical. But there is, on this side, a tank inside the cargo bay, filling it up. So, yes, that is... So it's just like the Shinkansen, where this carrier plane side has a whole lot of extra fuel, and it is cross-feeding it into the space plane side. Of course, with this setup, we would expect that uh, this side, the plane, the shuttle, is going to land at probably Wallopson if we uh, try and go at a good enough inclination for that, but we won't test it at that inclination. We'll go straight out from Cape Canaveral. But if we go to the ISS inclination, then it could probably land at Wallops, but there would be many bases along the eastern seaboard that it could land at. We have underfueled its OMS and locked that fuel for now, uh, but it's not going to get very fast. It'll, it'll be still fairly slow and fairly low when it separates and needs to make its landing. So it's, yeah, it's not going to get very far. Most of the work is going to be done by the shuttle and its own fuel. Inside the cargo bay, we are carrying Space Lab and the docking port and the tube and all. So that's the, I mean, it's about half the payload capacity of the shuttle. And we have full OMS tanks. So that is nominal. So the yeah, as I've already said, this is not going to work. And the reason I know that already is because the Delta V is not sufficient. Uh, 8,000 once we count the OMS engines as well and yeah that's not enough to get to orbit. The thrust wave ratio isn't great either but just for fun let's see how uh, well balanced I've got it. I uh, tilted the engines down on this side. This side uh, I believe I has I still have them uh, tilted in normal angles so uh, but this side has to be tilted down because as you can see the tank is actually mounted pretty high. So even then, I don't know if it's going to be able to keep its balance necessarily. And, yep, let's find out. One thing you'll notice is it's very light right now, because even with those tanks, it doesn't contain as much fuel as the external tank. Uh, we're uh, in total 800 tons. Uh, that's lighter than the shuttle plus the external tank normally is, I think. But now we have two shuttles, so definitely we're, we've got less fuel than the normal external tank would have. So, in a way, it'd be better to sandwich the external tank in the middle of the two, which is a thought. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, among many reasons why this is a bad idea, of course, you don't want to prep two space shuttles. So, it's much easier to get... Uh, what's topping off, anyway? It's not top off something, but I guess it's not too bad. Okay, yeah. It, it, it's much easier to prepare SRBs and an external tank than to prepare an entire other shuttle. And obviously we wouldn't want anybody on board. We should just probably get Buran, frankly. But even then it's not a great idea. Again, Buran would take a lot of effort to prepare. But this is just for the sake of memes. <laughs> oh no. Here we go. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's just see how it goes. Ignition. And I'll actually use uh, Smart ASS right from the start. Because I think it's better at holding the balance than SASs in this case. 
and we're using about 40% of the pitch authority. I mean, obviously I did the basic balance off of the start, uh, so I saw the center of mass and center of thrust, but as we go along, that's going to change, right? So that's more of the question. We still do have external tanks, obviously, so that's not too much of an improvement. It's just sort of a curiosity thing. As you can see from the thrust weight ratio, we really can't pack too much more fuel on board without changing the engine configuration anyway. So as long as we're keeping three RS-25s on each side, this is practically the best that it can do. I don't have Separatrons for the carrier shuttle, so we have to sort of hope in this case. The reason why is because the body collider isn't great on the, on the model. And placing Separatrons at all is a pain, frankly. But again, as this side gets lighter, things change quite dramatically. And naturally, it would want to dump those fuel tanks prior to trying to land. Uh, we're getting close to maxing out pitch. I'm wondering whether I need to shut off one of the engines on this side or not. Looks like you'll just about max it out when we finish it up. Hope we haven't been using any of this sides. Doesn't look like it. Uh, okay, yeah, just just about right. Okay, yeah. Uh, as you can see, not going very fast. Basically, Mach three. It might conceivably be able to turn around and head back to the Cape, actually. But we haven't gotten nearly far enough, so. That's the catch. Right now, these are pushing all the way down so that they get, the center mass is high because of the position of the tanks. So, but as they drain, it'll get lower. So that's a, as long as it's not flipping out, it's basically okay. But just summing things up, we're not going to get to orbit here. Yeah, not great. Like a thousand six hundred short of orbit. Uh, let's just double check the separation of the tanks. Uh, it's pretty clean. That looks good. Alright, uh, so we can work with that aspect of it. I mean, uh, surprisingly, the separation of the carrier shuttle and the tanks worked out without the separatrons, so that's nice. Okay, but this is going to uh, re-enter swiftly. Let us test a different configuration. Oh, I forgot I should have turned on the fuel cells and the APU. We were draining electricity there. Should remember that. All right, well, the tank volumes are the same, but we are switching it up with methane and oxygen. Yes, you guessed it. We, we are going with Raptor engines. Yep. So we'll have three Raptor sea levels and one Raptor vacuum on this side, uh, mainly because that's all I can fit. Uh, we'd have to tuck the any other Raptor vacuums in pretty darn tightly <laughs> otherwise, uh, especially if we want to make sure that they are uh, shorter than the body flap. So I'm just going with one Raptor vacuum there. And over on this side we have a total of eight sea level Raptor engines. Uh, they're using the configuration that I call Raptor Max, which uh, has the numbers as you see them there. So. That's for the sea level one. They all have those same stats. So yeah, and again, the bay also has methane and oxygen over here. Amazingly, you can see double the mass, double the mass of the previous launch. And if we take a look at the Delta V figures here, uh, 9,278, but that's with the OMS engines, which we would like to reserve for actually doing stuff in orbit. So we'll have to see. Uh, but uh, heftier thrust weight ratio off the bat, so that's nice. However, to keep the balance, we are going to have to do some interesting things with these engines as the fuel drains. Uh, another option would be to uh, give them a grouping and throttle them down separate from the engines on this side. So we could either shut them down or we can just throttle them down. Either way would work. But, yep, so we have gotten heftier. Let's see if it can make it or make make it to orbit. Uh, I don't know. We will find out.
Okay, and this time we are going to make sure to start the fuel cells in APU. Okay. I bet the Kerbals are on board the carrier plane, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not sure which side they're on. Okay, so Smart ASS is ready. And here we go. Ignition. And launch. We are lighting the sea, uh, sorry, the vacuum raptor at sea level here because we know it can. It doesn't have very good ISP at the start, 262, 263-ish by my calculations. So it's not great thrust and not great ISP, but might as well get it going. It'll, it helps the balance somewhat at least, but as you can see, it might be better just to fit more sea level ones ones on this side because we're we're doing a serious power slide here I mean uh, we're not using any authority at all mind you so that's nice uh, so the thrust vector is right through the center mass for now but we are doing this power slide we're gonna try to acquire the prograde vector here it's actually sort of amazing that that it's so little authority being used. I might actually want it to be using some authority and then as the side gets later use the opposite side as we go along. So we'd want it to be pitching up initially and then end up pitching down. Might be a little bit better. But we're already getting into the pitching down part of it. Well, now the progress vector is sort of pulling away from us again. Okay, shutting off four of the engines on the carrier. Oh, that didn't help the pitch a whole lot. Okay, well... Shutting another four down. Now we're just down to one engine on the carrier plane. But it's still got the fuel, so we want to use it. Just want to be a little bit closer to the prograde vector before we release. Okay, and release. Off it goes. Not the worst release vector, honestly. You can easily see it using its RCS to pitch down from there. In fact, it's almost naturally pitching down. Getting rid of the tanks while in the atmosphere might be worse than in space as we did before though. Alright, well, it's a tough call whether we actually make orbit still. Could work. Could be bad. We need to pitch up more. The vertical speed is going down here. Okay, we're getting to pretty high g-forces here, throttling down. Still looking pretty close. I think we'll make it, uh, maybe with a circularization with the OMS engines, as normal. But obviously this can't carry the same load that the shuttle did. We were carrying a lighter load already. Okay, yeah, that's it. Alright, so the tanks will deorbit. Unfortunately, we're still sort of in the atmosphere, so we're uh, our orbit is changing as we go along, but separating those off. That out. Okay, and these are, well, let's start the OMS engines, and these are no longer necessary. Okay, and OMS burn. Okay, and that's good enough for me, 278 by 244, 245-ish. And there you have it, the shuttle system absolutely nobody needs. <laughs> so, anyway, there you have it. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.